Lud Ramachandra. Otherwise, Hanuman, he would not give pranam. Mm -hmm. So, Hanuman himself, he said, Sri Nate Janaki Nate Abheda Paramatmani. I know that Krishna. I have to tell this talk one line at a time. <laughs> he said, Sri Nate Janaki Nate Abheda Paramatmani. I know that Krishna and the husband of Janaki, that means. Lord Ramachandra, Abheda Paramatmani, they are the same person. They are non-different from each other. They are both Parabrahma, this is true. But, Tatapi Mama Savasya, Rama Kamala Lochana. But my all in all, the Lord of my life is only Lord Ram, not anyone else. So Hanumanji, he knows Tattva. But his Bhakti is Icantic, one pointed to one Ishtadev, only to Lord Ramachandra. He will not do Seva for anyone else, only to Lord Ramachandra. Hmm? So you know that Hanuman, he serves Lord Ram in so many ways. Hmm? He becomes, for, his tail grows and becomes a fortress for Ram and Lakshman to stay inside. He can become the chariot of Ram and Lakshman, carrying them on his shoulders. He can carry messages. He can do so many services. He went and dis discovered Sita. He killed so many persons who are opposed to Lord Ramachandra. So he serves in so many ways. So you see, if you see Hanuman, hmm, then you see, how is he? Always in this, you see picture, Hanuman, or Dictive Hanuman, he's sitting like this. Not like you. Why? Because from this position you can jump up and do some service very quickly. <laughs> yeah? But if you sit like this, it will take you half a second more to get up and do some seva. So he's very, he always is what? Seven muk, attentive and ready, ready to render seva. His seva bhriti is very intense. Hmm? And we see that hmm, Hanuman, he, it said that wherever someone is telling Ramkata, anywhere in the world, anywhere in the universe, if someone is telling Ramkata, Hanuman will go there. Oh, in disguise like an ordinary person, a poor beggar, old, diseased even. And he will come. And he will be the first one waiting for the Qatar to begin before others have arrived. And sitting at the back in a very humble mood. Hmm? And he listens. Hmm? Oh, if Ram Qatar is going on all over the world, all over the universe, in many places, he accepts many forms. Hmm? And he's there and he listens. And then when the Qatar is over and everyone get up, gets up to go to leave, he's the last one there. And then he gives pranam to that place, to that qatar, to the speaker of that qatar. He rolls in the dust of the lotus feet of all of those who were listening to Ram Katha. Hmm? He has so much shraddha in Hari Katha, in Ram Katha. So it may be, we want to follow Srila Rupa Goswami. We want to serve lotus feet of um, Radha and Krishna Braj. This is true. Huh? But we, there are some requirements for us. So we come here and we give our pranam at the lotus feet of Hanumanji. And we pray, oh Hanumanji, hmm? as you have sevabriti, always ready, so please bless me that I will also have sevabriti. Hmm? As you have nishta in Nam, in Harinam, please bless me that I will have nishta in Harinam. Oh Hanumanji, as you have so much taste in listening to Harikata and honor for that Qatar, bless me that I will have the taste and nishta in the Harikata. And as you have icantic bhakti, one pointed bhajan to your ishtade. Bless me that I will have one pointed bhakti to my ishtadev, like this. So in this mood we come, we pray to Hanumanji, please sprinkle your mercy upon us, so that our life may become successful. See Hanumanji ki jai! Now we are going to chakra tirta. Hello, very Hanumanji ki!
जय जय सीताराम जलपान करो जलपान करो कहलाणी जी राधे कृष्ण हरि गोविंद हरी नंदी ने जया जया देवारे राधे कृष्ण हरि गोविंद गोपाल हरि वसुदेव बिंदु आड़ 
सुंदरी को भालो सिंदूर लगी ले सुंदरी को भालो सिंदूर लगी ले काले नदी सिब तोरा हाथी जुलाई रे दिशाई केरे सुंदर हाथी जुलाई रे दिशाई केरे सुंदर ये नील बारों रों कुबरों ये बाकाले आग बड़ी ये नील बारों रों कुबरों Jaya 
सुदर्शन चक्र जीव की जय श्री जगन्नाथ पुरी धाम की जय श्री नील माधव की जय गौर प्रमाण सो बाय द मर्सी ऑफ श्री गुरु एंड श्री गौरंगा वी हैव कम टू दिस वेरी सेक्रेट प्लेस ऑन द शोर ऑफ द ग्रेट समुद्र इन द बे ऑफ बंगाल द इंडियन ओशन दिस प्लेस is called chakra tirtha so this very place uh, thousands of years ago uh, this is the place where shri jagannath dev first appeared in the form of one very large reddish colored log of wood floating up on the bank of the samudra of the ocean here with yes with so many emblems and markings of chakra gada it means sudarshan chakra club lotus and kanch so there is a very beautiful history which shri guru dev has narrated a number of times every year during rathi yatra time he is narrating this history and this is the original history the first history of the appearance of lord jagannath so many many thousands and millions of years ago in satya yuga and in the first half of the day of lord brahma there was a very glorious great king named maharaj indra dyumna uh, and his wife his queen's name was gundicha he was very very great devotee uh, so his desire was always that he could have darshan of the supreme lord one day in his kingdom Uh, which was situated in the central part of India Ujjain at that time there were some pilgrims who came to nearby to his palace uh, and these pilgrims had just come from going in various parts of India and having darshan of the supreme lord in various deity forms and when they came there they were speaking together amongst themselves oh we have seen this beautiful beautiful deity form of the supreme lord nila madhava he is so exquisitely beautiful so one brahman advisor of the king overheard this conversation and then at that time he wanted to go to the king and inform the king so he came and told the king i have heard from these pilgrims of this very beautiful deity very difficult to see uh nila madhava he is directly the supreme lord himself and they were discussing about them uh, amongst themselves how beautiful he is so the king's desire arose in his heart he wanted to also have darshan of this beautiful form and the next day he told his brahman advisor to bring those pilgrims but when he went there they were gone so now the king learned that there was no way of finding this deity because those pilgrims had left so now he brought his advisor vidyapati who was the son of his priest and he brought so many of his other military commanders and he gave them instructions in order now you go in all directions and you go and search everywhere i want to find this deity nila madhava deity you must find him and then at that time you return back here and then i will go with my whole, with my king and my whole kingdom i will go there and i will take darshan and serve this deity and i will reward anyone with great opulence part of my kingdom if you find this deity so now with great uh, motivation all of them they went in the different directions four different directions some to the north south some to the west and vidyapati he went to the east to the bay of bengal here so in after some time after searching searching this direction and that direction all the others returned back to the king 
they could not locate this deity. So they told Maharaj Indra Dumna, we could, unfortunately we could not find this deity. But everyone was waiting, when will Vidyapati return? So Vidyapati, as he came to the eastern side here, he approached uh, the ocean and he saw very near to the ocean a beautiful, beautiful uh, village. And in this village was beautiful trees and flowers and fruits, beautiful birds, and the people of the village were very cultured. So he wanted to stay the night there, and he inquired from some of the villagers for a place to stay. And they told him, oh, the leader of our village is named Vishvavasu, and this Vishvavasu is a very uh, good devotee of the Supreme Lord, although he's born in a lower caste, the Shabara caste, but he's very exalted personality. And anyone who stays in our village, they can come to him and he will give them a place to stay. So Vidyapati went there to the home of Vishravasu. At that time he was not there, he had gone somewhere. And his daughter, 16 years old, daughter was there, very beautiful uh, daughter named Lalita. And she greeted him at the door very respectfully and he explained he needed a place to stay. So she uh, brought him inside of the house and served him very nicely as a respected guest. And then Vishvavasu, at that time, he returned a little bit later, and he came. So now when he met uh, Vidyapati, he said, oh yes, I will give you a place to stay. You please kindly stay here in my house. So when, Vishv when uh, Vidyapati was staying there, he noticed in the house when Vishvavasu had come, there was this exquisitely beautiful fragrance and he was trying to find out where is this fragrance coming from. And he could detect only that it was coming from Vishwavasu himself. So now Vidyapati, uh, he was thinking, oh, maybe this is some clue. Perhaps I am very near to Nila Madhava. And the next day he noticed that Vishwavasu left early in the morning. He was gone. And for the whole day he was gone. And in this way, Vidyapati began to notice that every day Vishravasa would leave in the morning and he would come back at night. And this beautiful fragrance would come every time that he would come back at night. So he was searching in the area there, but he could not find Nila Madhava. And then he asked to, uh, at that time he became very attracted to this daughter of uh, Vishravasa, Lalita. And she became very attracted to him. And he decided, oh, even though I am married, but still I am very attached and attracted. This young uh, girl is serving me so sweetly, so nicely. And he approached to the father, Vishvavasu, oh, I would like you, the hand of your daughter in marriage. If you please give me her hand in marriage. So then he agreed, uh, yes, you can have the hand of my daughter in marriage. You are a very qualified person, very cultured, very good qualities. I would be very proud to have you as my son-in-law. And in this way they became married. So now, after becoming married, then Vidyapati told to his new wife, Lalita, he said, you are my chaste wife, is that correct? Yes, yes, I am your chaste wife. And the chaste wife follows every request of the husband, is that true? Yes, yes, of course, any request that you have. Well, I want to know, where does your father go every day? He's leaving in the morning, coming back late at night, and there's this beautiful fragrance emanating from him. So then she told, no, no, I cannot tell. I have given a promise to my father. It is not possible for me to tell anyone where he goes. And then he said, what? You are my chaste wife and you cannot tell me? You are like my other half of my body and you cannot tell me where he goes? And then at that time she said, oh, but please, I, I have given my promise. But anyway, I will tell you. So now she said, but you cannot tell anyone else. No one can know about this. You have to promise. Yes, yes, Vidyapati said, I promise. Now she told, every day he goes from here and nearby there is a very beautiful uh, deity named Nila Madhava and he goes there every day and he performs so many archan and puja to this deity and then at, in the evening time he comes back. Uh, so now when Vidyapati heard this, his heart became so happy, so overjoyed. Now he had found the deity that Indra Dimna Maharaj had sent him to find. So now Vidyapati, he told to her, I want to also go and I want to have darshan of this deity. And then she said, but that is not possible. My father will never allow. And then he told, no, you please, you request your father. So then he appro she approached her father the next day. 
And uh, at that time, Vishwavasu told her, no, no, you are my darling daughter, but this is not possible for anyone to come and see Nila Madhava. If anyone comes there, oh, then perhaps Nila Madhava will disappear and he will go away and we will not be able to serve him. So now, uh, Lalita, she used the great weapon that all ladies use as a last resort. She gave the uh, threat, threat to, to her father. Oh, you consider me your da darling daughter? But you will, not, you will not allow my husband, who is like half of me, you will not allow him to see? Oh, then I will have to take poison. I will have to commit suicide. So now, oh, Vishwavasu, he realized that there was no other alternative and he agreed. Okay, he can come, but on one condition. He cannot see where we are going. He must be blindfolded as we go there. So he, then she went and told Vidyapati, and Vidyapati was very happy. Yes, yes, I agree. So now the next day, they mounted a chariot in the morning. Vishwavasu and Vidyapati got on the chariot. And just before he came on the chariot, Lalita handed to him a whole bunch of mustard seeds, very tiny mustard seeds, and put in his pocket. And she told, if you want to know how to find this deity, then simply as you are going along the way, you drop these mustard seeds. And in course of time, these mustard seeds will sprout up and very bright yellow flowers will come. And then at that time, later on, you'll be able to find your, the direction to this place. So now he did this. And as Vishwavasu uh, mounted the chariot and started off, he began to move in a very zigzag way, going here, going there. And uh, Vidyapati was blindfolded, but he began to drop all these little mustard seeds from his pocket along the way, along the way. And finally, they came to this beautiful area, like a tall hill. And there was an extremely beautiful forest around it with so many birds and beautiful flowers. And now when they got off the chariot, now he uh, took the blindfold off of Vidyapati. And then he brought him into that, the temple that was there, and he had darshan of Nila Madhava. And now Vidyapati was so overjoyed, he was crying tears of joy, <clears throat> and he was thinking, oh, Indra Dumna Maharaj will be so pleased, so pleased. Now I'll be able to go back to him and tell him uh, where that I've located Nila Madhava. So then uh, Vishwavasu told him, now I'm going into the forest, I'm going to collect so many ingredients for performing puja and archan. So you stay here and you wait. So as he was sitting there outside, he was looking over this pond of water, and there was a beautiful tree over the pond. And sitting on a branch of the tree was a black crow. And that black crow was somewhat sleeping, and suddenly he noticed the black crow fell down into the pond with a big splash. And a few moments later, coming out of the pond was a beautiful four-armed form of Vaikuntha. And then suddenly Garuda came down and took this beautiful four-armed form on his back and then went off, flew off into the sky to take him to Vaikuntha. So Vidyapati was so amazed. He thought, oh, how is this possible? This black crow, he has not done any kind of sadhan bhajan. He has not done any pious activities. He's simply a crow eating very nasty things. Oh, if even he could could so easily attain Vaikuntha. Oh, I must also do this. So immediately he began to climb out onto the branch and he was ready to throw himself into the pond also. And suddenly an aerial voice came. No, no, Vidyapati, you should not do this. I have very important plans for you. Uh, you must stay here in this world for some time and I will execute my plans through you. I want to reveal my eternal form through you. So then now Vidyapati came back and Vishwavasu returned later on and performed his puja like this. So now, after this, they came back at the end of the day. And Vidyapati, uh, he told to his wife, now I must leave here and I must travel across India back to my uh, King Indradyumna who has sent me. He so much wants to see this Nila Madhava deity. So now I am coming to bring him back. So then at that time Vidyapati left and he journeyed back to Ujjain. And when he came to Ujjain, he told Indraduna Maharaj. And Indraduna became so delighted, so happy, so ecstatic. Now he's going to be able to have the darshan of Nila Madhava. So now Indraduna Maharaj took all of his 
infantry and his horses and his whole army and, his, and so many of his Brahmin advisors. And they all proceeded there in a huge procession. And they came all the way across India to the bank of the ocean front here. And they were looking and looking for where that village was. And when they came here to the bank of the ocean, they found nothing, only a big mound of sand. The whole, by the will of Nila Madhava, the whole temple had disappeared, the whole village had disappeared, nothing was there. Now Indra Dumna Maharaj's heart was crushed. And then he sat down here on the bank of the Samudra, facing the ocean, and now he vowed, I, I will give up my life. I will not take any food and water. If I cannot have the darshan of Nila Madhava, there is no use for me to be living anymore. Such great devotee he was. And he was crying and weeping like this. And now suddenly, from the sky, came an aerial voice again. Oh, Maharaj Indradumna, you are my great devotee. Uh, I want that through, through this pastime, I will reveal a new transcendental form within this world that I want that you will worship. And you should be satisfied, you should understand that very soon I will appear here on the shore of this ocean. And, at that, and also I want that you will come and you will have darshan of me in Vaikuntha. So, so then at that time, Lord Brahma came and uh, Garud came and took Indra Dumna Maharaj directly to where Nila Madhava was in Vaikuntha. And he had the darshan in, along with the associates of the Supreme Lord, he had the darshan of Nila Madhava there, Lord Narayan. And he became so overjoyed. He became so ecstatic, weeping tears of joy. Then at that time, uh, he returned back here. But in the meantime, so much time had passed by. Eons and eons of time had passed by, and so many kings had come and gone. And before Indra Dunna Maharaj had left, he had actually built one very beautiful tall temple, which is actually the, the, the temple of Jagannath Dev. And that temple, it was covered by sand many times over thousands of years. And when he returned, there was one king who was ruling the kingdom, and he claimed, oh, this is my temple, I have built this temple. But then Indra Dumna Maharaj said, no, you have not built this temple, it is my temple, I built it so many thousands of years ago. And then at that time, there was one uh, Kak Bhushundi. He's one of the associates of Lord Ramachandra, who's living in this world for many, many yugas. And uh, he's in the form of a crow. And he, at that time, testified, yes, yes, I saw Indra Dumna. He is the real builder of this temple. And Brahmaji also came, and he testified. So now Indra Dumna Maharaj took over this temple again. And then, he, uh, at that time, he came here to the shore of the ocean, and there was an aerial voice which told, I am going to appear here on the shore of this ocean and I am going to appear in the form of one log of wood and you will understand because it will have the emblems of Lord Narayan, the, the lotus flower, the disc, the uh, club, and the conch. So then Indra Dunna Maharaj came here and they were waiting and waiting and then this log came exactly in this place. It came floating up. On the, on the shore of the ocean, and uh, now the, the, uh, the king tried to take his infantry and horses and elephants and everything and tried to pull him out. They had a golden chariot waiting to put him on the golden chariot. But no one could budge this log. It was so heavy, no one could even move it slightly. Now Indra Dumna Maharaj again, he was very frustrated. And an aerial voice came and told him, do not worry. I want that only Vishvavasu will come and Vidyapati will come. And if they come, uh, then at that time, very easily, you will be able to pull me out and put me on the chariot. So uh, then, at that time, the Maharaj Indra and his queen Gundicha, Vidyapati, Lalita, and, uh, and, Vidya, um, and Vishvavasu came. And also, it was by the will of the Supreme Lord that even though thousands of years had passed, they were still here. So now they came, and as soon as they touched the log, as soon as Vishvavasu and Vidyapati touched the log, immediately, very easily, it moved, and it came out onto the shore. They put on a chariot, and they began to, with a great procession, Maharaj Indra Jumna was so happy, so ecstatic. 
Now they brought the log of wood back to his palace. And now he called all the carpenters in the whole kingdom to please come. And he wanted to find the most qualified carpenter to come and to do the carving and make this beautiful logs into these three forms of Jagannath, Baladev, Subhadra, and Sudarshan Chakra. So now they all came and one by one they were trying with their tools to carve this log of wood. But as soon as the tools would touch, they would break into pieces. And so now again he was very frustrated. But suddenly this very, very qualified carpenter came there and his name was Maharana. Yes? Ananta Maharana. Ananta Maharana. And he came there and he told, yes, I can carve these, no problem. But on one condition, that you will have to not give me 21 days and I will be completely alone behind closed doors and if anyone interrupts within this 21 days or anyone uh, comes and tries to speak with me or anything, then I will stop immediately and that will be the end. So Indra Dumna Maharaj very happily agreed to this. Now, um, now Maharana, Ananta Maharana went into the room and they closed the doors. And for days and days and days, Maharaj Indra Dumna is waiting and waiting and he's expecting, oh, very soon I'll be able to have darshan of my Lord. But he became more and more impatient and more and more impatient. And then his queen started telling that we have not heard anything in these 21, no sound has come from the room. And neither there has been any water or any food gone into the room. So this is a big problem because if this Brahmin is in the room and he dies during this time, we will be, we'll have the sin of killing a Brahmana. So we must enter the room, we must see. But the advisors were telling, no, 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 he is told not to enter. If you enter, then it will be finished. But anyway, the queen, she, she forced her husband. So the husband, uh, Indra Dumna Maharaj, entered the room. And when he came into the room, then he saw these unfinished forms with very large round eyes and very short arms and legs. And he found these three, these four forms. And it appeared that they were partially carved. And then he saw this, this uh, Maharana had disappeared. He was not even there. And now again, he began to weep and cry, Oh no, I have committed offense again. I have done the wrong thing. And then at that time, uh, the aerial voice of the Supreme Lord came and told him, Maharaj Indra Dumna, this is the forms that I want to appear within this world. These are the forms of myself, myself, Jagannath Dev, and Baladev, my brother, and Sub Subhadra Devi, my sister, and Sudarshan Chakra. I want that you will worship me exactly as these forms are, and you should install me in the temple. So now Indra Dumna Maharaj was very overjoyed, and Jagannath, Baladev, and Subhadra were taken and finished very beautifully. And at that time, the Lord ordered that I don't want uh, that anyone else will serve me. I want only that Vidyapati and his dynasty will serve me. And I want only that uh, uh, Vishwavasu and his dynasty will serve me. Vidyapati's dynasty will do the Archan Puja. And Vishwavasu, his dynasty will cook for me and all of the descendants of that dynasty. And then he asked Maharaj Indra Dumna, do you want any benediction? And then Indra Dumna Maharaj told, yes, my dear Lord, I want one benediction, that in the future I will not have any descendants. And then the Lord asked, why do you want this? Because I don't want that any of my descendants in the future, that they will claim that you are their property, and that this temple is their property, and they will simply become materially motivated and simply try to make money. I want that only the, the, the property and everything will be in the name of yourself, the deity himself, and nobody else will have proprietorship. And only I want to be served by the dynasties of these two personalities. So then the Supreme Lord agreed, and at that time Sri Jagannath Baladev and Subhadra Devi were taken on, uh, into the temple, and the Lord told that I want that you will perform one Rathayatra festival every year and you will take me from that temple to the Gundicha temple and during that 10 day period no one will serve me. Only uh, Vishwavasu's descendants, they will serve me during that time completely. All of my services will be done by them. So in this way, uh, the transcendental appearance of the Supreme Lord 
Sri Jagannath, Baladev, Subhadra, Sudarshan, Chakra appear directly here on the shore of this ocean. We are very fortunate by the mercy of Sri Guru and Sri Goranga to come to, come to this holy place and this holy dam where Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself performed Rathiyatra and worshipped Jagannath Dev and revealed the true inner meaning of the appearance of Lord Jagannath in, in the other histories that we have also heard the other day. So this transcendental place, Sri Chakra Tirtha, is most sacred place. We should bow down in the, in the transcendental sand of this holy place and pray for the mercy that one day we will be able to render service to our Rupanuga Guru Varga and to one day attain the lotus feet of Radha and Krishna and Braj. Shri Jagannath Baladev Subhadra Sudarshan Chakra Tiyo Kija Jagannath Deva Kija Shri Chakra Tirtha Kija Gaura Pramala Now we are going to the ocean side here. All of us are going there. And then doing what? Bathing or walking? Yeah, if somebody yeah. wants to bathe. If anyone wants to bathe in the ocean here, now you can bathe. And otherwise, the whole Kirtan party is going to go down the ocean front with Kirtan. Hari Bhavi. Near Puri Hotel to direct our Chaitanya Gaudiya Man. So, who is coming by the they can go that side. And we are going to seaside. Please come on. Oh, I'm going to